we're all familiar with the typical countersinks that we uh, come across in our line of work. You know, some that don't drill a hole, some that drill a hole, and and at the same time, we'll do the countersinking for you. And um, some of the older types that were I bought when I was just starting in the woodworking field, little cheap ones like that. And, uh, you know, the sort of thing. But I wanted to introduce you to an interesting one today. This is an Otis, uh, Otis Smith countersink. And uh, I'll give you a little more information about it. But uh, here it is. And uh, we'll take a closer look. There's the name. Otis Smith Rockfall, Connecticut. It's an interesting piece. I'll show you a little more about it. Here we go. Otis A. Smith, Firearms and Hardware Specialties, Rockfall, Connecticut. And that Rockfall, Connecticut is on that uh, countersink. This is the 1905 catalog. And uh, I've used this before because I have that fails. But um, some of the things that he sold in here, I want to get to this uh, countersink. Here we are. And this one is uh, set up for an auger. Um, but this is the same countersink that we're looking at, and uh, there are examples of these uh, that actually have a patent date on it, but the one that I have does not have it, and uh, that's fairly pricey. Let's see, oh, per dozen, not so bad. So if we look real closely here, we can see the stamp of Otis Smith at the top, and then Rockfall, Connecticut underneath, but there's no... No marking for the patent date on it. But you see, this works simply as a clamp-on device onto a drill bit. And, um, and then the way it's adjustable is you can advance. You see these slots here, you can pull this back or forward and thereby advance how much of this cutting edge here is your countersunk portion. Simple, nice, and I think very interesting. So as you drill in, this stop is sitting there waiting to touch the wood. And when it does, that'll tell you that you've done a countersink to the point that you want it to be and no deeper. There you go.